that it is part of the natural order, that it is present among higher mammals in about the same percentages that it is present among human beings, that it is on the wide spectrum of human sexuality. The vast majority of people, if the statistics are accurate, some 90% of the people are heterosexually oriented, some 10% of the people are homosexually oriented, and there may well be some people who are on the cusp who are what they call bisexuals, though I tend to have less confidence in the definition of bisexuality than anything else. My sense is that if these studies are accurate, and if they begin to prove beyond reasonable doubt that homosexuality is a normal part of the human experience, and that it is not in and of itself evil, that we've got to change the way we relate to it. Now, that does not mean that I think all homosexual behavior is good. I certainly don't. I don't think all heterosexual behavior is good. I'm opposed to any predatory behavior. I'm opposed to any kind of behavior that denigrates one's partner. But I do think that if we reach the point where the scientific community, through its studies basically of the brain, because homosexuality seems to be, at least according to these Cornell doctors, a matter of the way the brain is shaped and formed in utero. If that turns out to be true, then, as I'm convinced it will, then the historic prejudice against gay and lesbian people will simply die the natural death, that our prejudice against left-handed people died, that our activities or definitions of what constitutes a witch died, all of the prejudices, I think, will, will but finally What I'd like away. to know is, before the scientific evidence is in, and I do not think the scientific evidence is going that direction, but assuming just for a moment before we actually cite the scientific evidence, that it's not conclusive, why have you given up your moral code in relationship to that topic? See, I don't think I have. What I've done is to apply my moral code. Well, my well, belief is that Christian morality exists when two people are in relationship and both are enhanced, more full, more in the image of God because of the way they have related to one another. And, and you understand why that's logically uh, it, uh, a fallacy. In other words, what, what you have just said is you have made a dichotomy between biblical ethics and absolute norm, and you have embraced, and of course you have said this in your book, you have embraced cultural relativism. Is that correct? I would, I would say that I've tried to apply cultural knowledge to Christian ethics. Mm -hmm. I do not think you can do Christian ethics apart from the knowledge that is present in our society. Well, you have to deal with what is the scientific data. Okay. And Dr. Walter Martin? Dr. John Money, professor of medical psychology and pediatrics at Johns Hopkins University wrote on this subject, and he made this statement, Bishop, which I think you'd find quite interesting. The basic principle is developmental determinism. Whether the determining agents of homosexuality are innate and biological, as you say, or acquired and social is beside the point. The point is that they are determinants, no matter where they come from and when they occur. Conclusion from a biblical perspective is quite clear. Human sin has brought the fall of man into the world and has forced us to look at a creation corrupted from what God originally intended. We are therefore dealing with de determinants constantly, and sin is one of the greatest disruptors of the human condition. I don't think that you fully deal with this. In fact, I think you redefine sin out of existence. Well, we're going to uh, pick this I up. I don't think I do. Okay. We are going to continue this, and I hope that you'll stick with us. We're going to find out, uh, should we abandon the absolute moral code that you find in Scripture because of uh, cultural uh, scientific uh, uh, theories? And uh, what about Darwin? And what about some of these Scripture verses that we just got done reading? We'll take a look at all that when we come back, so please stick with us. Hi, we're back, and we're talking about uh, should we as Christians hold to a moral code that would say that, yes, uh, everyone is a human being, and we have heterosexual, we have homosexual, but there's certain behavior that we do not allow because it is not part of uh, the creation ordinances. It's not what God would have for us. In talking about uh, the second aspect there of homosexuality, 
I must throw in three of the scientific uh, uh, gurus if you want. Alfred Kinsey, who everybody quotes, says, quote, I have myself come to the conclusion that homosexuality is largely a matter of conditioning. Uh, Masters and Johnson, the genetic theory of homosexuality has been generally discarded today. Despite the interest in possible hormone mechanisms in the origin of homosexuality, no serious scientist today suggests that a simple cause-effect relationship applies. Or, uh, Masters and Johnson again, we're born man, woman, and sexual beings. We learn our sexual preferences and orientations. Now, uh, gentlemen, we're talking about the scientific information, and, and Bishop Spong, in your book, uh, you quote uh, a medical doctor in Germany, uh, Dorner, who has uh, had a medical alert put out on him, and you yourself admit that he's been, uh, uh, his theories have been uh, discredited. discredited. Now, the question is, uh, obviously, the scientific evidence is not in. Even if it comes in, why should Christians say to people that find themselves in a fallen world with tendencies toward homosexual behavior that if the Bible says that God does not want us to be in that behavior mode, why don't we bring them back to the Lord and ask the Lord to help them and to change them instead of simply saying, listen, uh, we'll just uh, scratch the moral code and what God said, and we'll just kind of let you go and do your thing. John, I think that anyone who can be heterosexual ought to be heterosexual. The prejudice is so overwhelming, the hostility is so deep, the uh, distortion that comes in a person's life when he lives or she lives in a society that says some of the words that Dr. Martin keeps using, depraved, sick, etc., the distortion that comes in the lives of those people is a very deep and very heavy distortion. That's why I do not believe that anyone would choose voluntarily to be what is generally considered loathsome <coughs> and what is generally condemned in the society. I do not believe that we have that many people who like to suffer that much. There may be some masochists in the world, but they are not at that proportion. Now, that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that, that I've never met a heterosexual person who chose to be heterosexual. Heterosexual people just simply awaken to the fact that they are heterosexual. Uh, you don't stay, wake up one day and say, well, I've decided now I'm going to be heterosexual. I don't believe homosexual people do that either. I would agree that it is not a matter of genetics. Yes. I think that in time that the scientific community will establish that homosexuality is also a matter of brain formation. And, and if that's even a slight possibility, I would say that that should be enough for us to raise some questions about the way we condemn our own sons and our own daughters and our own aunts and our own uncles and our own brothers and our own sisters. Homosexual people are not just those people that frequent the bathhouses of San Francisco. They are people that we meet and love and know every day. And I think that we need to welcome them and somehow say, I don't understand it. And I know you don't understand it. But if, if that is who you are, we've got to find a way for you to live your life out responsibly and in a holy manner. All now right. we can debate what that is. Yes, and I think we need to. Uh, Dr. Walter Martin? I think that what we should say to them, Bishop, is uh, you are in a condition which God in his word says is evil. And Jesus Christ.